win today. Courtney Lyle alongside indoor national champion, beach bronze medalist Holly McPeak. And it's exciting to get to see the number one team in the nation. And they're on the road today. It certainly is. And Texas Tech has been sensational. Their best start in years. So Texas Tech in the white uniforms, Texas in their burnt orange. Logan Eggleston with the first pass and Reese Rhodes going over to the left side and Kenna Sauer is the first to get a kill for the Red Raiders. Look for Kenna Sauer to get a ton of swing. She just brings it on the left side. She is their go-to killer when it counts. This Texas Tech team also 2-0 in Big 12 play. They're coming off a sweep of case days. There's a service error for Texas Tech. What's impressed you the most looking at this Texas team, Holly, about what they've been able to do as the number one team in the nation? Well, I think combining the culture. I mean, they've got a bunch of new players on the rosters that have transferred in from other schools. So to create that culture. But one of the things that impressed me the most is what Jared Elliott said. He said, we have not had one practice in the gym. These athletes are pushing each other every day to get better because they have their eye on the prize. And that's the national championship at the end of the year. Yeah, I can only imagine what those competitive practices are like in Texas's gym. And there is a swing. It's Molly Phillips on the right side for the Texas Longhorns. Coach Jared Elliott has so much talent. He's been able to play with his lineup. Molly Phillips is on the opposite. Maddie Skinner's been there. A bunch of matches early on in the season. But Molly Phillips, a low air hitter, just gets it done on the right side and big block. And no question that Logan Eggleston is going to be on the left side and play all the way around. She's the front runner for National Player of the Year, and I feel like she just gets better and better every season at Texas. She's special. I mean, she has been since the moment she put on that jersey. She's an all-around player, one of the best in the country for sure. But what makes her special is her charisma and her leadership for this Texas program. Kenneth Sauer gets another swing off. They'll give her a third on the bump set from KJ Adams, who's starting Libero for the second match in a row for Texas Tech. But that goes wide and a point for the Longhorns. You mentioned those new pieces, Holly, and Zoe Fleck, the Libero for Texas, wearing that black uniform today. She is a very key new piece, the transfer from UCLA. Everybody talks about the physicality of Texas. They've been one of the best blocking scoring teams offensively. But what do they do behind the block? And that's what Zoe Fleck brings to this Texas team. Leadership, experience, and she just wants to dominate back there. She watches more film than anybody, according to her head coach. Sage Kaha Aina Torres is the setter for Texas, and she's able to get the kill out of the middle. Love the little quick attack, and it starts with a good first contact, and that's something Texas has really been focusing on, whether it's in serve-receive or a defensive contact, controlling that ball so she can run that offense. When we talked to Tony Graystone, the head coach for Texas Tech, he told us he was most concerned about Texas's serve. They can get you out of system quick, but they handled that beautifully there, and they're able to use Carrington Jones out of the middle. And that's been a huge focus for Texas Tech, running their middles, finding that connection between Reese Rose, the setter, and their talented middle blockers. You see Carrington get up and crush that ball out of the middle one-on-one. -on -one. That's a high percentage play for Texas Tech. It'll be a bump set from Fleck to Logan Eggleston, finding some room on that back row. Eggleston just going over the top. She hit that ball kind of in the gap between the blockers. Watch her come in. Actually, she just gets over the top. I thought there was a hole in the block, but that angle shows otherwise. It's impressive to watch from that angle, too, how high she gets up. The Brentwood, Tennessee native. And a back row attack from Kenna Sauer, something they've been working on with Reese Rhodes taking over the offense at setter this year. Now we see Maddie Skinner lining up on the left side. Jared Elliott of Texas has been playing with her on the right and the left, but the reason he likes her on the left is because she is a shutdown blocker. And he feels like across the country, there's more powerful opposites that you have to be able to neutralize with a strong block. So. That's a wrinkle that Jared Elliott's trying today in this matchup. 
And she gets the back corner just barely. Maddie Skinner, of course, the transfer from Kentucky. She won a national championship with the Wildcats in 2020. Beat the Texas Longhorns in that championship. And Jared Elliott did not forget it. Rhodes with the bump serve to Maddie O'Brien. Bump set, excuse me. Reagan Cooper on the swing, but Texas, the defense coming through. Texas, one of the best blocking teams in the country. They put so much pressure, especially out of system when they can set up a well-formed block. Cooper tries to cover, but cannot come up with it. So timeout is called as Texas is on a 4-0 run, leading this opening set 9-3 here in Lubbock. Volleyball continues. If you're just joining us on ESPN, you get a treat. You get to see the number one team in the nation. Texas already up nine to three in the opening set over Texas Tech. Courtney Long alongside Holly McPeak. And Texas is a team, they've got big pen hitters, but they've upped their back row play. They've upped their setter play. And there's a reason they're undefeated. Texas Tech trying to go to Reagan Cooper, but there's that block from Texas. And it's the setter, Sage Ka'ahaina Torres. She was an all Pac-12 setter out of Utah, transferred in last year to this Texas program. But she was on the bench. She waited her turn and now running the offense for the Texas Longhorns. Yeah, arrived a little bit late last year. They did use her some, but Jenna Gabriel was the main setter for Texas and a little bit shorter at the net than Sage is. So there you <laughs> loving that block when Sage Kaha'aina Torres is in the front row. One of the things I found interesting when talking to the Texas Tech coach, Tony Greystone, you know, you talk about the offensive numbers, the size at the net for Texas, but he was more worried about their serve. They've got great servers, six great servers that will put pressure on your serve receive every time. And Logan Olson, who's serving right now, is one of those. Logan Eggleston looking for just one more service ace today to tie the career record at Texas. She has 184. KJ Adams, the libero for the second straight match for Texas Tech, steps back. Sage going behind her, timing a little bit off to Asia O'Neill out of the middle. And coming in from the right side, the swing from Maddie O'Brien. Maddie O'Brien has really made a nice adjustment to the right side. She played some middle coming out of high school, but has worked so hard. She's so competitive and a strong blocker on that right side. They run Asia O'Neill off of one foot. That is hard to stop. Asia O'Neill is one of those players who it just keeps getting better, expanding her range. She's always been good behind the setter. Now she's a weapon in front of the setter, too. And Jared Elliott just talks about how she's improved as an all-around athlete. Yeah, if you aren't familiar with her story, back in January of 2020, she had to have open heart surgery for the second time in her life. The first was at 13 years old. And here she is, two seasons later, still looking better and better with her game. An elite athlete. One of the best servers on this team. Texas up 12 to 6 here in the opening set. We're playing to 25. You have to win by two. Nice pass to Sage. They go Eggleston out of the back row. And I'm really impressed right now with the serve-receive of Texas. Putting it in their setter's hand and running that C ball to Logan Eggleston out of the back row for Texas. Yeah, and that pass coming from Kayla Akana, the transfer from Nebraska, who played a pretty nice role for the Cornhuskers in her career there, known for having a really good serve, too. We've already talked about four transfers making an impact on this Texas team. Yeah, Texas went hard into the transfer portal, adding six transfers this season. That shot is in from Reagan Cooper. 
Reagan Cooper going deep to that back corner. Really smart swing. That part's open defensively. You can't cover everything. Watch the defense. They've got the sharp and middle back covered, but not that deep corner. Alex Torres on the serve. Zoe Fleck underneath it. They go to the right side of the swing and the kill. Texas point for Maddie Skinner. Maddie Skinner just brings so much diversity in terms of her offense. She can hit left side. She can hit right side. They can scheme block and put her where they want. But she brings a lot of power on that right side pin for Texas when they need her. We've been talking about Jared Elliott's trying to make the decision on where to put Maddie Skinner. Is it the right? Is it the left? What do you think, Holly? Well, after talking to him, saying that she is a dominant blocker on the left side, I think in the long run, that's going to pay off for them. They've got Melanie Parra on the bench, who's a great left sider, great one of the best servers in the conference. You know, it's a tough call when you've got that much talent. Jarrett Elliott told us how fun it was to play in their gym. Their practices have been such at a high level. They can go one team versus another team, and you're getting work against a really high-level opponent in your own practice gym. And I believe we have a challenge here on this last play. Talking about the practice gym, that's what makes a great team, right? You get challenged. Looks like possibly a net with her knee, Bergmark's knee. Not sure if that was the challenge. It's Texas Tech using the challenge. Uh, I want to remind you, if you're one of our new fans, this year the challenge system changed a little bit. Each team will get two challenges. If you're correct in that challenge, then you get to keep it. Yeah, I think it keeps getting better, having this challenge system and then minimizing them the way that you use it, right? If you're making a good challenge and you're winning it, you get to keep it. So it makes a lot of sense. Good opportunity, too, for Tony Greystone. take a step here. We're going to step aside to Aaron Judge coming to the plate. Let's get you to Kevin Connors.
and the hunt for 62 continues. We'll keep you updated on if Aaron Judge comes back up to the plate. But right now, Texas up 17 to nine. When we left you on that challenge, they did go ahead and replay the point. So Texas Tech will have two challenges remaining. But right now, Texas hitting 571, and they're up trying to be the first to get to 25 points here in the first set. And it's Kenneth Sauer swinging on the right side, attacking error, another point for the Longhorns. Right now, Texas Tech is passing the ball pretty well. They've been able to get some good swings, but making already six hitting errors in this first set. And Texas hitting, Texas Tech, excuse me, hitting zero in this first set. Kaylee Akana serving. Reese Rhodes going back to Sauer on this right side, and she will get the kill this time. Kenneth Sauer, their returning kills leader from last season, averaged 3.3 kills per set. That was ninth in the Big 12. Good right side attack going through the block. A little bit of seam to work with there. Tight pass. Cooper. Oh, and it drops. Logan Eggleston tried to get underneath it, but a nice shot from Reagan Cooper. Tony Greystone told us she's one of the stars, one of the great talents on this team. Yeah, look at this dig by KJ Adams. She made that play possible by keeping it alive on the O'Neill attack. And a nice for Texas Tech in this hour. A 3-0 run for the Red Raiders. Good jump float. Drops in front of Halter for the ace. Nice pace on that serve. Sage going to Eggleston. Oh, Reese Rhodes trying to dump it over, but Texas was ready, and here comes Eggleston again. Attack is long, point Red Raiders. Right now, Texas Tech playing some inspired defense and staying in the rally, earning some points, pushing for a comeback right now. It is a 4-0 run for Texas Tech. And Jarrett Elliott is going to call a timeout here. You know, it's been really interesting to watch this Texas team, Holly, because it was about a week ago they were tested by Kansas. They dropped the first two sets and ended up coming back to win that match. But Jared Elliott told us, he said, look, we learned a lot. It was the first time that we had a lot of new players together in an adversity situation like that. That's where you learn a lot about your team, right? This is a new group creating a new culture. And he said it was beneficial. He wasn't worried about it at all. In the gym, they're getting after it every day and pushing one another. Yeah, I can only imagine what those practices are right, like, right? Because of all the talent they've added. They added five freshmen and six transfers and had seven players returning. And the biggest, we've mentioned it here before, but adding a setter and adding a player like Zoe Fleck in the Libero position, that may just be the two key pieces Texas needs to get another national championship and be their first since 2012. Yeah, I agree. I think they definitely strengthened their lineup. And then now Maddie Skinner on the left, they've got Molly Phillips on the right. And Maddie Skinner can also add offense out of the back row. And that's something they haven't been able to do when she was playing on that opposite. So Jared Elliott has the ability to look at so many different lineups because of the personnel he has on his team. Yeah, and this Texas team has been well tested as well. They have four wins against teams currently in the top 10. They beat Ohio State twice, beat Minnesota and Stanford. They've only dropped five sets this season. Trying to stop a run by the Texas Tech Red Raiders here. They've scored four in a row. Rhodes going backside to Maddie O'Brien. I can't track it down. Cooper. Through the block. It starts with a tough serve. They've been able to get Texas out of system during the scoring run, and that allows their defense to pick up points and give their setters swings in transition on the pins. 
It's their longest scoring run of the first set at five straight points, but that right there is going to end it and give Texas back the ball. And then you send one of your best servers to back to the line, Logan Eggleston. Second in the Big 12 in service aces per set. Cooper with an out of system swing. Sage going to Maddie Skinner. Texas looking at the other side of the net saying that there was a net violation. Looks like Jared Elliott might challenge. Definitely somebody was in the net, but I like the heads up play by Carrington Jones to attack this ball when it pops up right at the net. Yeah, so Texas is going to challenge this, and I think maybe on her follow through, her hand might have touched the net tape. Unfortunately, well, we don't have a net cam today, so we can't show you that angle. We'll see if we can find a better angle from our crew. Early in that rally, it looked like Texas Tech was pointing at Texas that they netted. Oh, was it before that? It looked like it happened before that attack. Is it possible that Asia O'Neill on that move to get in front of Karen T. Jones? get a decision here. They do call a net violation on Texas Tech. So Texas uses that first challenge. They will get to keep it, and they will get the point. So Logan Eggleston waiting to serve here. Texas needing five more points to take the opening set. They've come out and hit 350 in this first frame. And that's going to be a point for Texas. Logan, Logan Eggleston is one away from tying that record, like you said, but she puts so much pressure on you from the front court and the back court, and that's what makes her one of the greats in the country. So timeout is called here. Tony Greystone leading this Texas Tech program. Last year, they had a great year. They went to the NCAA tournament for the first time in a very long time, their first postseason since 2001. They ended up losing in the first round to FGCU, but he told us he knew early on they were going to have a lot of those fifth-year players coming back, so they felt really good about what this year's team could do. Well, the best start in eight years. They lead the conference right now in digs per set with almost 16 digs per set. So defensively, they're putting a lot of pressure on their opponents. Yeah, the main difference has been their setting. Reese Rhodes was really their secondary setter. She was a backup. She did get some time last season, but she was having to learn how to take over this offense and be that main setter. And Holly, as you know, one of the biggest challenges is the timing with all your hitters. Yeah, and finding that chemistry, especially with your middle attackers who hit that quick tempo set. It's, it's high risk, high reward, but you need that connection. And setters and middle attackers need to find that rhythm together. And that's what Texas Tech has been focusing on lately. That's a key component to their success. 
Yeah, Texas Tech has come out there 13-2 and two on the season. Those two losses to Rice, who is a very good volleyball program, and Oral Robert, Roberts, they were a little banged up in that match and didn't have some pieces available. But they have some good wins. Oh, beat West Virginia in five sets, an actual reverse sweep. They swept Kansas State. So they've been playing some great volleyball this season. Yeah, Texas is always the big test, though, in the Big 12. Texas and Baylor, the two ranked teams in the Big 12 right now. Good up by Zoe Fleck. It'll be a bump set to the outside, and Maddie Skinner. Back row attack from Sauer. My goodness, Zoe Fleck mid-air to get that and save it. And Texas is going to get the point. This is why she is so elite. I love it. The black jersey is like the black hole. Everything comes up wherever Zoe Fleck is. Two great dig. She has so much range, covers such a big area of the court, and then has to get out of the way of her approach of her attacker. Yeah, averaging over four digs per set. That is a very big number for any DS. That ball's going to be touched and will be a point for Texas Tech. You see the leadership and the maturity, the way Zoe Fleck directs the backcourt for Texas. That comes with a lot of experience. KJ Adams on the serve. Asia O'Neill on the slide. Texas hitting huge numbers offensively, leading the country in hitting percentage right now in this particular set. They're hitting 400 as a team. And they hit 317 on the season, which is incredible. In fact, Texas has hit over 300 on the season the last seven years. Service error, Longhorns still looking for two more points to take this opening set. Last time Texas Tech went on a scoring run, Kenneth Sauer was on the service line. This time it's O'Brien. And Maddie O'Brien, one of their best servers. It's really hard to get a read on her serve. It just drops, and it's not a consistent drop, so it's hard to figure out what's coming next. It's going to be set point Texas. SKT, as they call her, she'll be back serving the setter for the Longhorns, trying to take the opening set. Texas Tech extends it. Second set point coming for the Longhorns. Brooke Canis good out of the middle in that first contact for Texas Tech. Able to run that high percentage play and find that connection between the setter and middle attacker. That's key. Here's Alex Torres. Zoe Fleck with a great first contact. And she's there to save the setter dump too. Over on the right side, the swing and the kill for Maddie Skinner, and Texas takes the opening set 25 to 17. And those are the little plays that make such a huge difference, and then Texas goes right back on the attack. So tough to stop. Texas comes out and looks so solid. They hit 429 in the opening set, led by seven kills from Maddie Skinner. Texas takes it 25-17. Texas takes the opening set 25 to 17 on the road in Lubbock over Texas Tech. And we take a look at the top 10. This was what came out earlier today. If you were with us for the Louisville Georgia Tech match, the NCAA selection committee revealed their top 10. Now this is through matches as of yesterday. And Holly, what stuck out, stood out to you if you saw this for the first time? 
Well, I mean, to see teams in the top 10 with a 7-5 and five record, with a 6-5 and five record for Minnesota, I feel like the committee really rewarded strength of schedule. If you took a challenging preseason schedule, even though you lost, you were rewarded. Um, you see number three, USD. They've got three ranked wins. They beat Pitt first match. Um, but lost to Louisville, so that really helped San Diego. Oregon at seven was a bit of a question mark, but you know it's it's interesting this time of year. Yeah, really interesting. They will have another reveal of their next top ten coming up on October 30th, so we'll get an idea heading into the NCAA selection show, which will be November 27th, about how the committee is seeing teams shape up. So Texas coming out hitting 429 in that opening set. What do you see most out of Texas, Holly, that stood out to you? I just think that Zoe Fleck in transition able to put their setter in a good position to spread the offense, and that's why you see them hitting 429 in the first set. Texas Tech comes out and gets the first point in set number two. Still playing to 25 here in the second set. Tech had seven attacking errors. It's hard to do that with this. It's hard to attack with this Texas block who has two blocks in the match already. But also, I mean, there's so much more when the block shows up, making an impact on the hitters on the opposite side of the net. Good point. I mean, two points from the Texas block, but five hitting errors on top of that. And it, Texas puts so much pressure on you. So Texas Tech just needs to find a way to score and minimize those errors. Logan Eggleston right there going down the line, attacking the setter for Texas Tech. Coming in with a big swing. Kenna Sauer is going to try to answer on her side of the net. And it's going to be Eggleston going around that block of Texas Tech. The defense behind the block has been the focus the last three weeks. And you see it paying off, giving Texas more opportunities to score and putting so much pressure on Texas Tech. They're making good defensive plays, but they keep getting extended. Rhodes is going to have to go with the bump set. She'll try to hit on and put Sauer. And that's a great sign for Kenneth Sauer. She has struggled on the out of system ball, but she's able to terminate there. One of the things that Kenna Sauer brought to this Texas Tech team, as soon as she got in the gym, the level was elevated, the confidence, the swagger that she had, the belief that they could be a top program. Huge impact on this Texas Tech team. Yeah, and that has paid off, as we said, making their first postseason appearance last year since 2001. Hoping to make it back there this year. Sage going to her go to Logan Eggleston. You're seeing why she's a front runner for National Player of the Year. 
first contact right in the setter's hands. And look at Logan Eggleston work to get outside for her approach. Isolated one on one, almost impossible to stop Logan Eggleston. Tied up at four. Remember, Texas took the opening set 25 to 17. And Sauer coming in, and then again, she's not afraid of the Texas block. No. And big arm gets her out of trouble on that left side. And you have to be aggressive. You cannot get tentative when you've got a physical block in front of you. Kenna Sauer doing a really nice job. Out of the back row, flies Eggleston. Back row violation. You are not allowed to step over that three meter line. Logan Eggleston crossed over it, trying to hit that back row bit. Watch her foot just steps on the line and the referee's all over that. Yeah, you're allowed to land anywhere, but the important part is where you take off and you can't be on that line like you said, Holly. So Texas Tech with a one point lead after Texas took the opening frame 25-17. Asia O'Neill behind the service line. And a point for Texas as they call a double contact on Texas Tech. Bella Bergmark in the front row for Texas. She will be the other middle blocker. Tra another transfer from the University of California at Berkeley. Rhodes going backside to Brooke Canis. Well, that's going to be a point for Texas. Not sure if that ball got part of the antenna, but it looked a little wide. This time they go to Cooper on that left pin, and Reagan Cooper is going to come through. She's got her fifth kill of the day. Coach talked about Reagan Cooper just being the talent of their team. Long arm. She's up about 10-7, 10-8. She gets up and puts that ball away past the Texas block. Yeah, Reagan Cooper, the transfer from Washington State. Tony Greystone told her she can bounce balls like crazy. She does it in her gym all the time. Did that drop in? It did! First lead, Texas Tech. Good scramble play. Out of system set to Reagan Cooper. Look at the elevation and just tagging the line in front of Zoe Fleck for the point. Team right now with six kills is Cooper, and that's going to be a service area. You hate to see it at that time when Texas Tech had some momentum going, but it'll tie it up at eight. They go to the back row to Kenneth Sauer. Texas was ready for it. Here comes Maddie Skinner. Texas Tech has been working that back row attack. Sauer had a double block in front of her. Texas big defensive transition. Here you see the back row. Of course, Zoe Flack and then Maddie Skinner on that left pin for the defense and transition kill. Here goes Carrington Jones off of one foot. Now we've seen a lot of Brooke Canis doing that, but how about Carrington Jones getting in on the action behind the center? And Reese Rhodes finding that connection with her, her middle attackers, and that is so big. That's a high percentage kill. With another great pass. They go in the middle to Bella Birdmark. But Texas Tech is their block is gonna stop it. Right now, everything going the way of Texas Tech. They're hitting 364 in this second set. Minimizing airs, only one on the whole set. Maddie Phillips swinging in the le on the left pin in this rotation. Back row again by Sauer. Sage going to Skinner. 
into the middle. She set all three weapons across the front row on this point. And, and then Texas Matt, is gonna get it. Maddie Skinner finally on that right side, but it was not easy. Texas Tech has so much fight, and you know why they lead the conference in digs. You're seeing it today making it really hard for Texas to put the ball away. Carrington Jones in the middle, but that's gonna be a point for Texas. I believe that ball just went wide, but the connection between the setter and the middle blocker way better for Texas Tech. They're getting use and getting attack numbers, which will help their outside hitters as well. Here comes Maddie O'Brien. Logan Eggleston going down the line, and it was saved nicely by Reese Rhodes. Molly Phillips gets her turn, and she will terminate Texas with a two-point lead. Texas in system. Even on transition balls, they have all their attackers available. Setter gets the balls right in her hand, and that allows Molly Phillips to hit a quick ball on the right pin. One-handed set. That's all that Reese Rhodes could do to get it out of the net, and they get a point. I love it. Carrington Jones ready for that one-handed set. And so important to know that your setter's gonna lift it for you and you can get on top of it. Good point for Texas Tech. This has been a much closer second set. We saw Texas really pull ahead in that first set. They won 25-17 and Molly Phillips again. Back-to-back -back kills, Molly Phillips 15 down the line on the right side. I had the pleasure of training Molly Phillips in the sand this summer. She did some cross training and what a wonderful young woman. Great, well, very coachable. And I mean, six foot five, can you imagine in the sand? She was dominant. Oh, I bet. I was going to say, what, were, what was your favorite part of her skill set? Just her coachability. She could do everything. And, you know, we see her playing indoors and she's a great blocker and attacker, but she can play defense, reads the game really well. Yeah, on the beach, of course, you've got to be able to do everything. Block, set, dig, all of the things, because it's just you and your partner out there. And there's a point for Texas Tech. That time, O'Brien, good kill on the right pin. Little bit out of system. You see the blocker's hands way over the net, but O'Brien using them in her favor. Logan Eggleston tooling the block and gets Texas to 15. And we'll step aside a much closer second set here. Texas on top, 15 to 12. The difference in the second set has been the defense of the Texas Tech Raiders. The K.J. Adams, the freshman libero, has been sensational. And that's really helped them stay in this game. They just trailed by three, but they had their first lead early in the first set because of those defensive touches. Yeah, and it's been interesting, too, to see the evolution of who's been at libero for Texas Tech. Maddie Correa has held down that position. She actually won the starting job in the preseason from K.J. Adams, who was their primary libero last season. But the last two matches, it's been Adams in a different color jersey, and this will be a point for Texas. Always good to have that healthy, com the competitive gym, right, in, in the battle for that position. But both players can make an impact in the back row. And Holly, we've seen two different coaches look for different things that sets their libero apart. For Tony Greystone, it's the passing. They are valuing being in system right now. So whoever that better passer is, they're going to get that shot. Yeah, I mean, especially when you're playing a team like Texas who puts so much pressure on you from the service line, you need those serve-receive numbers so you can hit at higher numbers in serve-receive, get in system. Logan Eggleston trying every tool in the book to get a kill, but instead it's going to be Maddie O'Brien for Texas Tech. 
Texas Tech has been relentless. Again, staying in the rally with their defense. And then Maddie O'Brien just to the middle of the court. Smart tip. Asia O'Neal had to tip it. The timing a little bit off there. Swing out of the middle. Guess who it is? It was Reese Rhodes, the center. I thought it was her coming out of the middle. Let's take a look at it again. Yeah, roll reversal. I love it. Heads up and very aggressive move. Saw the ball right on the net. Why not? Yep, Brooke Can is setting up her own setter with the pump set behind her. Eggleston tooling the block, and Logan Eggleston, her number's up to eight kills today. Right now, the offensive numbers for both teams much closer. Texas hitting 240, Texas Tech hitting 273. Kenna. Sauer, what a good match she's having. Six kills now. And she's been really good from the service line. In the first set, they made a big run with her on the line. Puts nice pace on her serve, getting Texas out of system. And that's going to be a, no, excuse me. They're going to call a violation on Texas Tech, so a point for Texas. Right now, Texas Tech has two hitters in the front row, so look for Kenna Sauer to hit that back row quick attack. Service error, Texas, giving the point back to the Red Raiders. will be Paige Mooney coming in to serve for Texas Tech. Maddie Skinner with the tip. Maddie Skinner this time full power on the angle. I like Maddie Skinner on that left side, knowing that she's such a force as a blocker on the left side, I think that this particular lineup could go a long way for Texas. Yeah, they've worked Maddie on the right side and the left side. Jarrett Elliott was still kind of up in the air on Thursday when we talked to him about where she would be playing in this match, but we've seen her start on the left side today. Cooper with Re the point. Yeah, Reagan Cooper is so athletic. I love watching her attack that ball. She's having a good time, too. It's fun when you get to play the best team in the country and just go for it. Yeah, especially on your own home court. Texas Tech hitting much better in this set. They're hitting 320. That'll be a service error, though, and a free point for Texas. It gets them to 20 points. They have now nine service errors, talking about Texas Tech. Quick attack out of the middle, off the block, double block there for Texas, and they still can't stop Jones. It's a race to 25 points right now. Texas already took the opening set, 25-17. Wow, the service error is creeping in at tough times right now for the Red Raiders. Yeah, I mean, you, they know they need to serve Texas tough, but you have to serve it in the square. I believe that's three in a row for Texas Tech. Maddie O'Brien tips over the block. Where's Sage going to go? She's going to Logan Eggleston. Sauer. And Texas's block holding strong. 
Kenna Sauer does not back down on that swing. She knows this is an important point, but look at Molly Phillips and Asia O'Neill nowhere to go. And timeout called Texas needing three more points to take a 2-0 lead in this match. I want to remind you, the Mets and the Braves continue their battle for the NL East title on Sunday. Our Sunday night baseball matchup, they'll finish up the three-game series at Truist Park, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and ESPN Radio. Our coverage begins at 6 Eastern with baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown. Looking at both of these teams, they're both hitting in the high 200s in this set. That was big for Texas Tech because they hit, at one point, they were hitting zero in the opening set, but they've really settled in and made it super competitive. It's been back and forth here in set number two. They made some really nice adjustments, and they're passing the ball really well and managing their offense. They've been able to get their middles going, and that is really important to free up their pins on the outside. Kenna Sauer having a really nice match, but same with Reagan Cooper. Now Reagan Cooper with those seven kills, Kenna Sauer with six. Meanwhile, for Texas, Maddie Skinner with nine kills, no attacking errors. Holly, she is hitting 529 to lead Texas right now. She has been so impressive, and I, I feel like Texas just has been in system all day, whether it's in transition or serve receive, and that really helps her get those kind of numbers. And Texas Tech will take that point. <laughs> Molly Phillips goes after it. That is in. Texas to 23 points now. That first contact. Everybody talks about, we talk to coaches every day we have a match and it's all about the serve and pass game. Can you serve and put pressure on your opponents? And can you pass well enough to stay in system and be able to put the ball away? That's a tight pass there. Reese Rhodes had to dig it out of the net. And Logan Eggleston is able to kill it at set point, Texas. Look at Le Logan Eggleston going inside the block and outside the Libro. Pretty impressive on the left side. Texas looking for that 2-0 lead in the match. Much better pass from Alex Torres. But the Texas block holding up, and Texas leads the match two sets to none. Defensive numbers at the net. Texas really made a difference at the end of that second set with their block, but Texas Tech had much better offensive production than early in that second set. Now, Texas Tech hitting 233 in that set, but for Texas, they were hitting 323. They've gotten their number up to 373 for the match, led by Maddie Skinner and Logan Eggleston. Both have three kills, but Maddie Skinner with no attacking errors today. At least one more set to play here in Lubbock. It will be a must win for Texas Tech. The Longhorns on top, two sets to none. Texas leading Texas Tech two sets to nine. Now we didn't know where we would see Maddie Skinner, but we figured she would have an impact. Playing on the left side today, and Holly, she has no attacking errors, hitting 529. Nine kills on 17 swings, and she is known for her defense on the left side, but her offense has been spectacular. There you see a Texas block. And sorry, this isn't Maddie Skinner, but it's what Texas's block has been doing in this match. And they've definitely affected Texas Tech. Five blocks today for Texas. And they were able to close out that last set with a block.
We talked about the impact transfer. Zoe Fleck has been spectacular, just owning and running the backcourt for Texas. And then Maddie Skinner, we just talked about her nine kills, 17 swings. She's got a block hitting 529. That's a pretty big impact. And Holly, for this Texas Tech team, we saw improvement. They looked different in that second set. They hung in there with Texas. They made it really close. What was the biggest change for you? I felt like just controlling their pass and serve receive and then getting their middles involved. They were able to get some kills out of the middle and that frees up their pin hitters on the outside to score. And then obviously they're strong defensively so they can dig some balls, transition some of those, and then it's close. So Texas Tech, they will have to win this set in order to extend the match. Remember the Texas Longhorns, the number one team in the nation. They're 10-0 on the season. They've only dropped five sets on the season. One of the questions we asked Tony Greystone was how was Reese Rhodes, their setter number 16 in white, how was she adapting to being that number one setter? He said they were working on the timing. How has the timing been today with her and her hitters? I feel like it's been better. I know they've been focusing on that. That's the rhythm between the setter and your middle attackers. That quick ball, which is a high percentage attack that you want to be able to run because it holds the middle blockers on the other side of the net and then frees up the pin hitters, at least to form some uh, holes in the block. So I think it's been a lot better. It's really good to see the progress Texas Tech has made and they've gotten all their weapons involved. We've seen both middles in action. Matty O'Brien has had some big swings on the right side. They're gonna need all of them if they have, they've got to win this set here. Getting 180 for the match compared to 373 for Texas, who does lead the nation in hitting percentage. So the Red Raiders will get to serve first here in set number three. It's Brooke Canis back to serve. Molly Phillips on the right side for Texas, and that is sent back over and out of play. Texas, good pass, lots of weapons available. On the first contact, if you put it in your setter's hands, you can run that quick to the middle. You've got Molly Phillips, who's got some size on that right pin. So many weapons. Zoe Fleck serving at Alex Torres, and here comes Carrington Jones. Words will try Jones again off of one foot. Great up by Zoe Fleck. And Eggleston pushing into the back corner. Cooper. Bumps that to Eggleston. And Logan Eggleston connects and makes the kill. She's in double figures, the only player in the match in double figure kills. But Texas Tech digging balls, staying in the rally, getting opportunities to end the rally. But Texas just too much in transition. That serve out, and Texas Tech will benefit from the service error. Seventh service error for Texas today. Texas Tech with 10 service errors, some of them really costing the Red Raiders late in that second set. And there's one, back-to-back -back service errors. Right now, Texas Tech has three hitters in the front row, but there's Staring across the net, they've got Logan Eggleston, Asia O'Neill, and Sage Kaha Haina Torres. That's a big block on the other side of the net. Reagan Cooper. Into the middle, the swing, the kill from Carrington Jones. Good first contact, and then you see the connection with Carrington Jones and Reese Rhodes. I like it for Texas Tech. That's a connection they've been working on. They felt like Reese Rhodes was a little bit further ahead in her connection with Brooke Canis, their other middle, and they were still working on their connection with Carrington. Players 
jump different heights. They've got different range. And as a setter, that's something you have to learn. You want to find that sweet spot for your hitter. And that's why it takes time between setter and hitter to develop that relationship. That swing out by Eggleston. Looks like there's a challenge. And we'll see if there was a touch on this ball, I believe. Yeah, both teams do have both challenges remaining. So looking for a touch on this ball. Net cam up and running. Do we see any fingers move? I do not see any finger action. Looks like Logan Eggleston going for that outside right hand of the blocker, and there's no movement, in my opinion. The original call was no touch, so it would have to be obvious for them to overturn this. Second time Texas has challenged today. They were successful in their first challenge, meaning they get to keep it this year. Looks like he's come to a decision. No touch. So they will, this call will stand. We're able to see a touch on that ball. We didn't see one either from the angles that we showed you. So here goes Paige Mooney. Again, a must win set for Texas Tech. And the service errors continue. That's the 12th today for the Red Raiders. 12th service error and just two aces. You want a better balance than that, ideally. They were able to go in the middle, but the Texas block just waiting on Carrington Jones. They knew she was coming. Asia O'Neill is tough to get around. And that's one of the things about a one set. It's just straight in front of the setter. Asia O'Neill does not even have to move. The ball set a little bit low. You want to kind of spread that out if you can. They'll try her again. Listen, I think it was Maddie O'Brien who took that swing. Yeah, it looked like a double quick out of the middle. You had your middle attacker attacking in front and your opposite attacking behind the setter. Skinner with the pass and the kill on that play. Maddie Skinner's been working hard on her back row skills. She's got the potential to dominate from six rotations, getting those serve-receive reps every day in the gym. Angel Adams laying out for it. They go to Kenna Sauer on the left side. <laughs> Logan Eggleston was trying to dive and pancake that up, but it'll be a kill for Kenna Sauer. KJ Adams is having a really nice match for Texas Tech in the back row. She's setting up that offense for Kenneth Sauer on the left. Point for Texas Tech. It's an ace for Maddie O'Brien. We talked about how tough her serve can be. Texas did not have enough time to react, and it touches one of the Texas players. This is Logan Eggleston out of the back row for Texas, and she terminates. Texas back to a one-point lead. 
back row attack is something, especially when the setter's in the front row that Texas wants to get better at. You see Logan Eggleston from behind the setter and behind the three minute line with a kill, her 11th of the day. Spinner denied by the block. They will try her one more time. And a Sauer to the other pin, and it was touched, and Sauer ties it at seven. Can a Sauer big arm on the left side, and she just gets her feet to that ball, and watch the power. She's hitting that ball inside this block, and Zoe Fleck, one of the best defenders in the country, can't handle it. Backside to Maddie Skinner, but that one is out. No touch called on it. Texas Tech with the lead. Second set, Texas Tech had the same exact lead, 8-7. They made a big push early in the second set. Now all tied up at eight apiece in this third set. Texas Tech hitting 333 in this set. That's one of the highest percentages that we've seen them at today. We got Texas hitting 250 in the current set. And the team's trade service errors. I think it's just maintaining the level against Texas, right? They put so much pressure on you. One, from the service line, B, with their offense, and then C, with their huge block at the net. So it's just trying to maintain that high level of play. Kayla Caffey has been inserted in the middle for Texas right now. She's been one of those players battling for a spot, the transfer from Nebraska. Cooper on the left side, using the block to her advantage. It's a two-point lead now for the Red Raiders. Love the defense and the way Texas Tech is turning it into a point. Reagan Cooper goes high off Molly Phillips for the kill. Try to tip off the block, but it comes back out on Texas's side in play. And now Texas Tech pushing ahead. And timeout is going to be taken by the Longhorns. Good defensive pressure at the net, realizing that Texas only had a middle attacker and a right side. So the block for Texas Tech was well formed. Molly Phillips trying to wipe it out of bounds, but drops in. That gives Texas Tech a 3-0 scoring run, and the Longhorns have to take a timeout in Lubbock. And we're back. Texas Tech extending its run. 4-0 now, leading Texas here in this third set. The Longhorns took the first two sets, so the Red Raiders have got to win this set to extend the match. Kayla Caffey has been inserted in for Texas. Remember, she transferred in late for, te for Texas, coming from Nebraska. First time we have seen her here in set number three. By Phillips on the right pen. That was going to be tough for anybody to dig up. Yeah, Kayla Caffey, the transfer from Nebraska didn't get the reps that everybody else did, so she didn't play a lot over the summer and has been learning this Texas system. If you follow, follow the volleyball world, you know she played at Missouri, was a big piece of what Missouri was able to do, and then transferred to Nebraska, and now playing at her third stop, Texas. Cooper 
Harper. On the right side, and it was touched. Point for Texas Tech. Look at them go. Reagan Cooper with her ninth kill. Both left side attackers for Texas Tech have been really good. That time high off the hands, and you have to be creative when you've got a big block in front of you every time you got inside. Got to use all your tools. Texas Tech's defense has been really tough. They're sending everything back Texas's way. Finally, Longhorn's able to get a point tooling the block by Eggleston. And anytime you can extend rallies, you put more pressure on the other side of the net, and you give your team more opportunities to get swings and score. Texas able to get it up and get a point out of it. Emma Halter with the one-arm dig to keep it alive. Coach Jarrett Elliott has loved having her as part of the program. He just loves her fire, and she is unafraid in every situation. Kayla Akana serving now as Texas is trying to climb back. It's going to be hard to do with Cooper and company attacking the way they are. That time, Reagan Cooper, they used her on the right side. And I talked about her athletic ability. She gets up and cranks it inside the block, sharp in the angle. Reagan Cooper leading the way for Texas Tech with 10 kills. She's the only Red Raider in double figures. Meanwhile, Texas has Logan Eggleston with 13 and Maddie Skinner with 10. When you need a kill, you go to Logan Eggleston. Yes, you do. 13 kills on 33 swings, hitting 303. Logan Eggleston, one of the best players in the country, brings the heat when it counts. She can do it with her serve, too. But that one goes long, a little too much power on it. Tenth service error for Texas. Sage Kaha Ida Torres with the jump and the point. SKT is a very offensive-minded setter, and when she gets an opportunity, she's really good at mixing up her attack. She likes it in the middle. She likes throwing it behind her. But credit, credit Maddie Skinner with the perfect pass there. Kind of sour. Sage going back to Maddie Skinner now. Good reward for the perfect pass earlier. And then look at that first contact. She's got all her hitters available. And then Skinner puts it away on that left side. Rhodes using Candace on the slide. That usually is very productive for them. Now Texas is in a rhythm right now. They are, and they've only got two attackers in the front row. Yes, they've got Logan coming out of the back row, but then they've been able to score a ton of points in this particular rotation. And Maddie Skinner's kill forces Texas Tech to call a timeout. Must-win set for the Red Raiders. They're hitting 333 in this set. Looking at the stat sheet, Texas has zero aces. And if you're Texas Tech, you got to be happy about that, right? They're the, one of the best serving teams in the country, and they've been able to neutralize the serve. Yeah, and that was one of the things that Tony Greystone talked to us about. He said a lot of people talk about their power, about their hit percentage, but what stands out to me the most is how Texas can serve you off the court, and we have to do a great job of passing it. They've been pretty solid, especially these last two sets. So Texas
Texas Tech hoping this timeout will slow down the momentum a little bit for Texas, who has scored three straight points. Texas won the first set 25-17, followed that up with a second 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 set win 25-19. Eggleston leading the way with 14 kills. A lot of people think she's the top candidate for National Player of the Year. Step aside, Aaron Judge coming up to the plate now. Lubbock, Texas used four kills from Maddie Skinner to get back in this third set. Now we're tied at 19 all after a block from Texas Tech. Remember, we're going to 25 points. Texas Tech has to win this set to extend the match. Both teams with great hitting percentages here in set number three. Logan Eggleston puts Texas to 21st. If you look at the stat box, you've got pin hitters for Texas. Maddie with 16 kills, Logan with 15, Molly Phillips with six. One of the goals for Jared Elliott was to get their middles going, and they've only got three kills out of the middle. And we saw them to make a change in the middle, Holly. We saw them bring in Kayla Caffey for Bella Bergmark. 
Yeah, I mean, if, if you're Texas, right, and you've got all these skilled players, you want to focus on your weaknesses, focus on a goal like getting offense out of the middle. So maybe you set a goal for your team. Hey, we need four kills out of the middle per set or whatever it is. But I don't think those are numbers that Coach Elliott is going to be happy with. They do go to the middle there with Asia O'Neill. She's not able to terminate. We'll see where Sage goes next. Behind her to Molly Phillips on the right side. Texas Tech player, tough defense. Eccleston is able to find the hardwood. Middles have not been able to score for Texas, and then they go back outside to end the rally. But that first attack ball out of the middle can get better for the middles of Texas. It's a shanked pass by KJ Adams and it gives an ace to Texas for the first time today. Red Raiders are gonna take a timeout here. That ball just floated up at the last second and had enough pace that it was tough to react in time. So Texas needing three more points to win the match. Texas Tech has got to get to 25 first to extend it. It seems like Texas just kind of locked in. They really focused on getting the ball to Maddie Skinner, who had been really productive. And those four kills that she had over a span of about five points was really big to get Texas back in this set. And the numbers have come way up. Actually, Texas Tech has a better hitting percentage. They're hitting 357 to Texas's 350, but those are blistering offensive numbers for both teams. And Texas Tech is doing that against Texas. All they need is a side out and some defensive stops to get right back in this. And they have played Texas really tough. Texas, who is one of four unbeaten teams in the nation. These are the four teams that have not lost a match so far this season. Texas up at the top. Remember, they've only lost five sets on the season as well. Texas Tech with no more timeouts remaining in this set. Probably the most competitive set that we've seen today between these two teams, too. Both hitting over 350. This is a good test for both teams. Kind of serving. service error that's a big point for tech and that's an opportunity for texas tech can they take advantage and score a point their big arm kenna sauer is in the front row sauer's leading them with 10 kills well her and reagan cooper each have 10 kills Asia O'Neill blocked on the slide. We're tied at 22. Carrington Jones, huge block. Out of the middle for Texas Tech. Watch the hands over the block, pressing it back into the court. It was actually Kenna Sauer who got that. Carrington Jones with the assist. They'll try Eggleston for a second time off of hands. Texas up 23-22. That time, good hitter coverage by Texas to get another opportunity and swing. Logan Eggleston did not have her best match the last time out for the Longhorns, but she has been so efficient today, hitting over 360 in this match. It's an amazing number for an outside. Sauer. Breaks up the block. Remember, you have to win by two. Love that Texas is getting pushed. Texas Tech has been so strong in this third set. Now hitting 345. Oh, 
They go back to Maddie Skinner, who was so big for them earlier in this set. It is match point, Texas. And Maddie Skinner taken a part of the serve receive, delivers a perfect pass and gets rewarded. Kill on that left pin. Asia O'Neill serving for the match. Rhodes is going to Sauer, tooling the block, tied at 24. Kenna Sauer, 12th kill of the match. Extra points, I love it. And Tech sends back one of their best servers in O'Brien. No question, you just keep feeding Maddie Skinner, right? She's having so much success. Second match point, Texas. Yeah, I mean, you know you want to set your middles, but when your outside hitter is this hot like Maddie Skinner, you just keep going back to her. She's had one attacking error today. On 33 swings, that's impressive. Tech will go back to Sauer, one and up by Flex. Skinner, Texas closes it out. It was a battle in the third set, but Maddie Skinner, something special in her arm in Lubbock today. Texas Tech was really strong. We saw some moments of brilliance, but hard to maintain against the best team in the country. A great effort for this Texas Tech team. They're going to be one to watch for sure. They ended up hitting 387 in that last set, but it's hard to stop a player like Maddie Skinner when she's taken 34 swings, just one attacking error. 19 kills for Skinner today to lead Texas with a monster 529 hitting percentage. Texas, the number one team in the nation. They are still undefeated and improved to 11-0 on the season. 3-0 in the Big 12.